Hello and welcome to MasterChairAustralian.com market recap for the week ending Friday, November 7, 2014. I apologize, my voice is a little weak because I have a cold, so I'll try to speak as loud as possible. But um, in this in this week's video, we'll look at S&P 500, which is stolen at new highs. The bond performance on Friday reflects increasing fear in the stock market. Gold miners may be starting to count the trend bounce, and I'll show when it's a good time to enter it should you decide to do so for a counter trend. Also I'll look at, we'll look at car correlation between various asset classes and how that may apply to stock trading and uh, to uh, asset selection. Oil broke, broke support this week but this may be considered this may be in fact a bear trap. I don't have a hundred percent guarantee of that but it sure feels that way. And the reason why I think that this could be a bear trap is based on the performance of energy ETF XLE. So this is a chart of S&P 500 large cap index. Uh, this is just a five minute chart on 7th of November on this Friday. And as you can see it just kind of meandered up and down, it didn't really go up and didn't really go down. Finally it closed. 0.3% up, which is really nothing. Considering that this happened on the heels of a very positive uh, jobs report, where an employment rate actually dropped to what 5.8%, um, I would consider this, you know, stocks did not really appreciate the good news. Bonds, on the other hand, showed significant upside, significant upside and they gained 1.1% on that day. Uh, to me this looks like, you know, on the very good news, stocks did not rally, but on the same very good news, bonds rallied, which shows that uh, there is a, uh, in my opinion, more fear in the market. It's possible because of the situation in Ukraine, and possibly because of the announcement of the new troops being sent to, to Iraq, uh, to Iraq, yes. Um, don't know. Uh, at this point, I'm not sure why this is happening. Once again, the technical analysis, analysis tries not to answer uh, why, but uh, more of a when and how we're going to buy or sell some uh, securities. So let's take, let's take a look at S&P 500. Why don't, again, you've seen this chart before. It's a proprietary price, price plot of S&P 500. And our uh, latest buy was on uh, October 21st, right here. Uh, S&P 500 is bullish, and therefore we're going to buy, buy the dips. The S&P 500 is very overbought. Uh, the price momentum oscillator is in a very high territory. It hasn't yet crossed over down. It means this upswing is still running its course, uh, and we're at new highs. So. <clears throat> It's possible that on Monday we will just continue higher. For example, if we gap up on Monday and then continue higher, it will be a very positive sign. That means that the investors are looking at the jobs report as a positive thing. Um, however, it's possible that you know we may actually start seeing some profit taken. And uh, let's take a look at the bond funds. So. AGG, which is a general bond fund, is a good good barometer of uh, um, bonds in general in the United States. You can see here that the PMO did cross over to the upside, <coughs> and uh, based on the Friday's performance, I decided to go ahead and uh, open a small position in AGG. So, you know, once the Arun goes. Uh, our green Arun goes up to 100, I will definitely add more to this position. It's it's still a relatively small position right now. The treasuries, you can see the treasuries, TLT, 20 plus year treasury fund, <coughs> you know, same thing. Uh, treasuries are slightly lagging the general bonds. You can see that uh, PMO did not yet, yet cross over to the upside, uh, but, you know, bonds generally correl correlate to one another. and also the performance was 
very you know impressive you know it, it gained 1.15 percent on friday and the heels of very positive jobs report so this tells me that there is some sort of a fear in the market so i decided to go ahead and open a small smaller uh, position as well once again it's really easy to open uh, add to the position or if i'm wrong for example if it you know drops down it's i'll have a chance to exit right there with a poss possibly very small loss <clears throat> let's take a look at uh, gold miners gold miners etf last week had a terrible week dropped about 16 percent but on thursday and friday it started to rebound and you can see it was a relatively strong rebound thursday and friday steady gains of five plus percent so we're up about 10 percent from the from um from what it was, from the 6th of November <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and um, at this point since this is a counter trend where you know this is a long-term bearish uh, chart I'm looking for a uh, crossover or rather a surge of the Arun to 100 to signal that indeed this is a good counter trend opportunity here on the 13th of October it did not happen See, so Arun kind of just gave up right there. But in the past, for example, right here on January 7th of this year, Arun surged. Uh, January 3rd, rather. Arun surged, PMO crossed over. You know, that was a nice 21% pop right there. Even counter trend. You know. But once again, counter trend trading is more dangerous than the regular, you know, trading with the trend. <coughs> take a look at oil oil had a pretty bad uh, couple of few weeks actually a few months now since the breakdown in July 31st has lost about 21 percent or so of its price but uh, finally here on um, 3rd of November it broke down even more through this support level right here of about 79 <coughs> um, it's possible that this is a bear trap the reason what's bear trap bear trap is when the uh, stock price goes down and then it just kind of rallies right back out so uh, after breaking the support so the reason why i think this might be a bear trap is uh, based on the energy uh, etf performance and let me show you that one as well <clears throat> so this is xle energy select sector spdr fund and its top holdings are ExxonMobil and um, Chevron and Schulenberg and ConocoPhillips, etc. Um, it is. It had a, you know, since October 10th, I consider this a uh, in a downtrend. Um, however, uh, in the next slide, I'll show you that the correlation between various stock funds is very high, and since this is a stock fund, you know, the correlation. So the general stock market is pretty positive it's high so you can see that here uh, on 15th of October um, <clears throat> it stopped it stopped falling but let me just go back to oil fund for a second to oil and uh, on 15th of October and further on this fund was trading flat so let me show you XLE again but from 15th of October until yesterday, on November 7th, this fund was actually gaining. It gained about, what, 7% or so? So, based on that, I think oil may have, you know, overshot itself, so to speak. And um, XLE might be a better representation of the energy market, in my opinion. <clears throat> so, we'll see. So with that said i wanted to show the correlation between various etfs or asset classes so this is a weekly plot of s p 500 going back to 2010 and this one two three four five are correlation coefficients of various other etfs for example technology energy utilities gold and treasury fund TLT. You can see technology, very high correlation, 80%, 90%. Always, whatever TLT, whatever SPY does, 
whatever S&P 500 does, XLK will follow. Pretty much the same thing you can say about XLE. It was few exceptions, you know, a couple of exceptions here or here. It does pretty much what S&P 500 does. So it has a high correlation coefficient. And XLU, even though it looks like it's sometimes dips into negative territory, in other words, S&P 500 is going up or down, and this is going doing the opposite. So in this case, S&P 500 is going up, and XLU is actually going down. In general, it stays in a positive territory. So stocks, all stocks, correlate to one another better than other asset classes. So I look at S&P 500 as the you know, most important parameter of the general market. And then all of the other stocks, stock funds and stocks in general, more or less follow them. Of course, absolutely there are exceptions, as for example with gold miners and uh, gold-related stocks. We can see that gold kind of does its own thing. It's really poorly correlated to S&P 500. It just does what it wants to do. And the same thing with TLT, which is treasuries. It has actually a relatively strong negative correlation to S&P 500. So if S&P 500 is going up, TLT is going down. And vice versa. Right now, it's kind of weird. We have a strange situation where since... Um, kind of about whole whole of this year, more or less, both treasuries and stocks are going up. So it's an unusual situation. But nevertheless, you know, um, it, it's a useful information to have. So going back to our XLE example, I still think that, you know, since this is a stock fund and S&P 500 is going up, you know, it will likely write itself and continue going up eventually. Don't know when, but it will go up eventually. Okay, with that, um, let's uh, wrap up. <coughs> and uh, if you have a chance, please uh, join our mailing list. Go to mastercharstrading.com and uh, enter your email address there so you can get important updates. <coughs> if you have a Twitter account, connect with us there. Facebook, same thing, and then stock tweets um, also will be posted there. If you have any questions, you can direct mail us. And then uh, we have a YouTube channel as well, uh, where you're watching this video. Um, the charts that are mentioned in this video are located in um, unstockcharts.com in the public section. Let me show you how to get there again. So you go to stockcharts.com and then click on blogs and then um, scroll down it's a, little, uh, it's a little tough to see I'm going to resize the window for a second okay here we go so you know clicked on blogs continue down and then view all public charts right there and scroll down to master charts trading right there <coughs> with that um, thank you for watching and uh, have a great trading week bye bye